So what is this particle that's full of cholesterol that ends up in blood vessels and blocks them? It's got nothing to do with nature. What can happen to LDL is rather than going back to the liver, it can stay in the blood and change its character, change it to be smaller and harder or be glycated or oxidised. And once LDL changes, the liver wants nothing to do with it. Tell the, the rubbish pits of the body to get rid of it. And if those rubbish pits happen to be anywhere near your blood vessels, that's a disaster. So let's think about a bit more detail about how these particles interact with each other, because that's important. So fructose can be converted to triglycerides in the liver. And as I said, normally you export that as the VLDL particles. It's a packet of fat that goes out to the tissue. If you make too much of that VLDL and nobody wants to use the fat, they just hang around in the blood. That's why you have high triglycerides in your blood because the body doesn't want to use them. It's too busy using carbs. So if this VLDL particle accumulates, it starts crashing into the other particles. First of all, fatty liver. So what predicts fatty liver? High levels of triglyceride. VLDL correlates with triglyceride. So when I talk about this VLDL particle, it means triglyceride. You can tell whether you've got a lot of VLDL being made and not used if you've got high triglyceride. And just an issue people often ask me, how, well, how do these numbers add up? If the total cholesterol is 6 and the bad cholesterol is 4 and the HDL is 1, well, 2.2 and 5 does not make 6. How do they add up to 6? We work out how much VLDL cholesterol there is from the triglycerides divided by 2.2. And as uh, Jimmy said, that's a faith, that's a sort of a formula we use even when we don't have evidence for it because there's no other way of trying to work out how much VLDL cholesterol there is. And we're not supposed to use that calculation when the triglycerides are too high because, as I'm going to tell you, because when the triglycerides are high, the particles start crashing into each other and the whole formula starts breaking down. So here's this VLDL that people on high carb diets make a lot of. And not only can it crash into HDL, but there's a protein that helps it swap bits and pieces with HDL. HDL is actually trying to help out this big particle that nobody loves and say, well, give me some of your triglycerides and I'll help you distribute it. But, you know, HDL is giving up its cholesterol ester, taking up fat, helping get rid of the fat, giving up its cholesterol ester, getting rid of... You know what happens to HDL in the end? It disappears. It gets worn out and disappears in its effort to help L the LDL do its job. And so anybody who's got high triglycerides or high VLDL will have a low HDL. It goes hand in hand. If your triglycerides go up, your HDL will go down. If your triglycerides go down, your HDL will go up. 